I'm going to get a clean tissue again because of the color contrast you can see sometimes you get a bit of that orange there and what happens is you can start um, creating a blend of colors so always make sure you clean everything nicely up so that's that and then I'm going to show you this beautiful chalky ink which I'm absolutely in love with that's why I've gone ahead, uh, I have gone ahead and ordered more. Okay, so let's do this one now. Just like that. It all kind of goes inside there, so that's the beauty of it. That you can go from one ink to another. Now these are very juicy. So these are the Tsukineko ones. If you're not familiar with this ink, oh my goodness. They are amazing because you can stack them like this and you can create a nice little tower and it takes up so little space on your desk. They're super pigmented. They are super juicy, so you need very little of it. And the colors are beautiful. They layer beautifully as well. I just love them. Okay. So, and now I'm just going to build up right in the middle. This ombre, soft ombre effect is so easy with the brush. So, there you go. Very beautiful, very smooth. So although the color is very similar, but I hope you can see that the smoothness of the ink. So that is the reason that I enjoy using um, chalk inks or pigment-based inks rather than dye-based inks. But that's again, that's just my preference. It's not to say that one is better than the other at all. <coughs> so. Okay, next thing. What I want to show you is how to blend colors. Okay, so I'm going to actually do it right here in the middle. I have some space, so why not? So let's now do blending. Uh, let's say I want to add a bit of this mango madness with um, a bit of the color, the turquoise jam is the color that I used just before. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to start with Mango Madness and put it right in the middle. So if you have not cleaned your stencil properly and there is a little bit of previous color left, it kind of will blend into your stencil, which I personally find quite pretty, but you know, it could be that you don't enjoy that sort of a look. So now I'm specifically going to follow this um, pattern here. And then I'm going to take this brush. I don't need to clean it off because that's the last ink that I used. And then just around here where you can see... these petals that we haven't inked up. I'm just going to add a bit of ink right there, like so. And now to create that ombre, just go over the orangey or the yellow. When you're going to see this beauty now, you'll be like, oh my God. I'll be quite honest with you, I have not been a stencil girl <laughs> and the reason why is because I didn't like the stencils that were out there on the market. What I wanted was not there. Oh my god, look at this. <gasps> Isn't this stunning? Now this ombre again, the um, soft 
um, soft blending of the two colors is best created again with pigment based inks. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay, so just for fun, I'm going to show you the difference um, of using, so the brush, I think you, you pretty much got the idea how amazing it is and how easy it is to use. I will try to wash it tonight and see how it is and then let you know next uh, in the next video how long they take to dry, etc. But the fact that you get five brushes in the pack, it means I still have two or um, I still have three brushes there to be used if I wanted to for the next day, if the, the ones that I wash, if they will be wet, that is. So hopefully that is. Just be careful that you don't break up. I mean, if you have a little bit of a damp brush, you might break up the, um, what are they called? The fibers of it. Okay, so let me just clean up the stencil real quick. So I think I'm going to move on to the water lily just because I want to show you or give you some examples of how to use it. So you can see here it's quite thin. So I'm going to stick my tape on the side there and I'm going to go parallel on the side there. That's it. So let's now have a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my spongy. The beauty with these is you can use different colors because they have sides to them. If I really wanted to, I could cut off somewhere around here, but I think I'm going to just bend it like so and use it like this way. So let me go into this color, ocean green, or should I keep with the same color? Okay, I'll keep with the same color just to make it nice and easy. So here, what I want to do is just go like that, get that pigment off. And what we're going to do is we're going to dab it like so. Now, like I said, it's a bit difficult to create that soft ombre with this technique, so it will be a lot brighter. So maybe use an ink that's lighter in color um, to do the ombre with if you wanted to. So just dabbing like this, it's not taking that much longer. I guess the brush is probably quicker, but then if you think about it, this has a lot more detail. And, you know, if you want to really make sure it's all nicely inked up. Also, I'm doing the entire of the stencil in this case, which is done here, the centers of it. Okay, and I'm also going to show you how to do ombre with another color with this one. So firstly I will lift and see what we have just to show you but I can see it's a lot brighter already. You're using also a lot more ink that way. But it's nice to have a bit of a variety. The other three stencils are a little bit faster to do. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to lift it on one side and show you that it has that sort of all over brightness, doesn't have the ombre that we had created with the brush here. But what we can do now is Put the stencil back on, use the other side of the sponge and we're going to go into the color that we had here. And that's going to create a lovely green because we went all the way with the orange. So again, there we go. And then we're going to start with the... <coughs> So you can see that it is uh, a lot more difficult with a sponge to create a smooth transition. So what you can do is use the sponge up to the point where you need to. So these bits that are quite difficult, 
like that. So something like this and then to create that ombre I would use the brush go into here that also cleans off the any colors that you had before and so now I'm just going to use the brush for that smoother kind of look There you go. And not touch the middle of it at all. And for the middle, I'm going to go back into the orange and really try to build it up like this. Okay. Right, so let's have a look now what we have. So there you go, you can see it's a completely different look, but also very, very nice because you can actually see the orange color peeping through on the edges, so it makes it look like it's been sort of like a bleached or, you know, when the sun sort of burns things out, that's what it looks like. I'm just going to put this stencil here to ready to be cleaned. Okay, hands clean, stencil clean. I think I'm going to move on to the other two just so that you can see them in action as well. So I'm going to pack away the chrysanthemum and the um, water lily. Now with the water lily, because again it has these intricate bits here, make sure you sort of don't have two stencils kind of laying next to each other because if you pull them quickly you could you know damage the long bits. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So tulip and iris, let's do those. I'm going to demo them too. So the other thing that these stencils are great for, and again, I had it in mind when I was designing, is the fact that you can actually use them together. So everything I design, I want it to be not just like individual and that's it, but you can if you wanted to. So let's try something completely different. So I'm going to, this time you don't need to adhere anything. What you're going to do is you're just going to find a part of the stencil that you like. So let's say I'm going to hold it like that and ink up this area here. I'm going to use a different color now just for fun. Shall I do it these two? Yeah, okay, I'm going to use the Mango Madness. So let's have a look if I have any. So this one has gone a little bit green on me. So I'm going to wipe it. Go back into Madness, Mango Madness rather. And then just going to, if you want to, you can of course use a bit of washi tape just to avoid having your stencil move but here is what I wanted to show can you see those tiny little bits with the bristles go right in there like that and wiggle around and that's how you're going to get the impression okay so say I quite like this part okay so I'm going to lift it now and that's what I have I have a part of the stencil and then I'm going to switch colors. <clears throat> I think it looks best when you switch the colors for this technique. I'm going to wipe what I have here again to not contaminate the next ink. And I'm going to go into Aquatic Splash and load up the brush with this color like so. And then I'm going to take the iris, so the one before was tulip, and now what I'm going to do is actually layer them 
and see what happens next. You will love the look. I'm just going to ink them up. And look what happens. You have a layered, beautiful look. Now, if you can see a bit too much ink there, just take a napkin or a tissue and just dab it off so you don't have too much. But that sort of look, it looks gorgeous. Now I can go back to this and ink up another part of the stencil. And you can build something that looks like you painted for hours, but in fact, it took you seconds to do. So watch this. And then you can sort of even add another color. Let's go with the next color. I'm going to now ink up this part here like that. And I'm going to go into just a little bit of a contrast. This is even before I'm adding any gold inks, any white inks. You can do so much with this. It's so much fun. I feel like I'm just going to be stenciling now all the time. I found a new obsession. So what's this color? This is the Oasis Green. So it's a bit of a grayish, grayish green. A slightly different color. Taking it up like that. And let's see, so you have a beautiful layered look, so you can see different colors from underneath and you can build a beautiful background, you can make something out of this, you can interpret it as flowers, there's just so much and oh my gosh, I'm in love with my own designs. <laughs> so I hope this was somewhat useful and if you're new to stencils, it just takes you a little bit of time, I promise, because I have gone through exactly the same thing. When I was new to stencils, I kind of wasn't really into the whole thing of what do I do, how do I use them? But the way I designed these stencils, all you need is just beautiful inks, preferably pigment inks, and beautiful colors, and you can almost create a finished piece of art just by doing that, you know? And um, that's the whole idea of it. And like I said, I will um, in the next video show you how to incorporate these beautiful stencils in, um, in my illustration styles. And of course, before I forget, thank you so much for purchasing the stencils uh, to those of you that already have done it and um, believed in, in, in this product to be a great one before you even got to see them, what they look like. Because obviously when you see stencils, like this, you know, it's sometimes a little bit hard to kind of imagine what they're going to look like um, on paper, even though there is um, a black and white image here, but still. So thank you so much and see you soon.